हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द डिपिट्स थेरी नाउ विल डिस्कस व्हाट आर द अजम्पन्स एंड लिमिटेशंस ऑफ दैट डिपिट्स थेरी सो वी हैव डिराइव्ड एन इक्वेशन फॉर अनकनफाइंड एक्विफर सो लेट अस डिस्कस व्हाट आर द अजम्पन्स मेड इन द while deriving the equation so the velocity flow in the propor is proportional to the tangent of the hydraulic gradient instead of its sine okay that is uh, the first assumption that is the when you consider the velocity of the flow that is proportional to the tangent of the hydraulic gradient instead of the sine okay that is the first assumption then second assumption is what the flow is horizontal and it is uniform and everywhere uh, uniform everywhere in the vertical section that is the second assumption what the flow is horizontal and it is uniform throughout the aquifer that is everywhere it is uniform in the vertical section then the third assumption is the aquifer is homogeneous right the aquifer is homogeneous that is made up of similar material that is homogeneous then it is isotropic okay that is made up of same material that is homogeneous then it is isotropic and uh, it is of infinite aerial extent that is the third assumption then the fourth assumption made is the well penetrates and receives water from the entire thickness of the aquifer so the well what we have considered while deriving the equation that well penetrates completely into the aquifer right and it receives water from the entire thickness of the aquifer then the next assumption is the coefficient of transmissibility that is constant at all the places and at all the times the coefficient of transmissibility so the ability or uh, the transmissibility the symbol is t t is equals to k into b that is the formula what we have studied so the coefficient of transmissibility that is constant at all the places and at all the times uh, when you derive this equation then the next assumption made is <clears throat> yes the natural ground water regime affecting an aquifer remains constant with the time so whatever natural ground water regime that is present in an area that affects the aquifer that remains constant with the time so this is one more assumption which is made then flow is laminar okay and the darcy's law is valid so while studying darcy's law we have discussed what is laminar flow right the water flows in a one direction that is laminar flow and darcy's law is valid only for laminar flow then complete penetration of well with 100% efficiency that is the well is penetrating completely into the aquifer and it has 100% efficiency then stabilized drawdown so these are the assumptions of dupuis theory which is very very again important question okay assumptions of dupuis theory then we'll discuss what are the limitations of uh, dupuis theory so it is very rare to get get the homogeneous that is made up of same material isotropic and uniform thickness of the aquifer so in nature to get such type of aquifer is very difficult then when you start pumping okay pumping discharge should be constant but in reality it may fluctuates due to the non constant power supply so if there is a variation in the power supply then uh, the pumping discharge that may vary but here we consider it is constant so this theory is not applicable to vertical flow of the water 
it is horizontal flow so for vertical flow this theory is not applicable then the darcy's law is applicable only for laminar flow and then this theory is applicable only for laminar flow and not for the turbulent flow so if there is a turbulent flow this theory that is dupitt's theory is not valid then this theory has neglected the seepage flow from well to another okay to other place or within the influence area so this theory that has neglected the seepage which is taking place from one well to from the well to the other places or within the influence of area or area of influence so these are the limitations and assumptions of the dupitt's theory which is a very very important question now we'll derive the similar equation for the confined aquifer now in previous class we have derived equation for unconfined aquifer now we'll derive equation for confined aquifer confined aquifer is what when uh, the water is present or the aquifer is sandwiched between the two impervious layers so suppose there are two impermeable layers and in between there is a water okay that is the aquifer then this aquifer is called as the confined aquifer that is held between the two impervious layers so the here again uh, you can see the in the figure okay that shows so here this figure uh in which you can see there is a well which is penetrating into a confined aquifer so here there is a impervious layer again here there is a impervious layer so it is a confined aquifer so this is a confined aquifer and the this is the flow flow of the water okay then this is the b that is the thickness of the confined aquifer okay so here also the center point is o with coordinates x and y we have to take okay then here this is the initial water table this is the initial piezometric surface piezometric surface because water is held under pressure so we have to use the word piezometric this is the radius of influence that is where uh, the cone of depression that touches the water surface okay <coughs> then this is the radius of the well that is r then r1 and r2 are the radius of two observation wells that is uh, the two observation wells with the drawdowns s1 and s2 uh, and the height that is h1 for the first observation well and h2 for the second observation well so here also you can see the drawdown that is s okay the difference between when you start the pumping that is discharge of the water so this is the initial water table and this is the water table which has gone down so this is the drawdown that is s and this is the h that is the total height okay total height is here okay Uh, that is capital h you can see this is the total height of the aquifer now we'll take any point p on the uh, cone of depression with coordinates x and y so this is the diagram for unconfined uh, sorry confined aquifer so this figure shows a well which fully penetrates in a confined aquifer or an addition aquifer so here let x and y be the coordinates of any point p on the drawdown curve which is measured with respect to the origin o okay and then from darcy's law we know that q is equal to kia that is uh, the flow that is crossing a vertical plane through the point p is given by q is equals to k i a 
so where a that is ax is the cross section area of the flow that is measured at p that is 2 pi x b so here because of the uh, confined aquifer we have to consider this b that is the thickness of the confined aquifer you can see here the b is the thickness of the confined aquifer then uh, b b is the thickness of the confined aquifer and ix is the hydraulic gradient at p that is dy by dx now we'll derive the equation using darcy's law right q is equals to k dy by dx into 2 pi xb or you can write this as q is equal to dx by x is equal to 2 pi kb dy so x one side and y one side if you take then uh, now you can integrate this equation between the limits capital r small r for x and for y we have to integrate this with capital h and small h uh, similar to uh, what we did in unconfined aquifer so if you integrate this equation right you will get what with respect to uh, with the limits capital R small r for x and capital H and small h for y. So this uh, equation if you integrate what you will get q is equal to 2 pi kb capital H minus small h divided by log to the base e capital R by small r. So this can also be written as 2.72 kb h capital h minus small h divided by log to the base 10 capital r by small r okay then uh, or you can write this equation as 2 pi t s okay where t is what the coefficient of transmissibility that i told you the expression for t that is t is equals to k into b right so kb you can replace with t okay and h minus h is nothing but the drawdown that is yes so you can replace this by s divided by log to the base e capital r by small r same expression you can write it for log to the base 10 that is 2.72 ts where t is the coefficient of transmissibility that is bk kb or bk okay and yes is the drawdown log to the base 10 capital r by small r so this equation is known as the equilibrium equation or it is also called as themes equation this equation is called as what the equilibrium equation or theme equation okay so if h1 and h2 are measured depths of water in the two observation wells now we have to consider the two observation wells which are situated at uh, the radially at a distance of r1 and r2 so we can write this equation okay as q is equals to 2.72 right this equation you can write it as 2.72 kb h minus h so with respect to the two observation wells now we will replace capital h with h2 that is the what uh, height in the second observation well minus first observation well divided by log to the base 10 r2 by r1 that is the radius of uh, the second observation well and the first observation well or you can write this equation as 2.72 t okay kb is replaced by t h2 minus h1 divided by log to the base 10 r2 by r1 so if the drawdown in the observation well are s1 and s2 then h2 minus h1 uh, is equal to s1 minus s2 so if you see the figure it will be a clear idea right so these expressions you can write with respect to the data given okay so you can write this rewrite this equation as q is equals to 2.72 kb h capital h minus s2 
minus capital H plus S1 divided by log to the base E R2 by R1. So in the, abs in the absence of observation wells, what equation we will use? In the presence of observation wells, you can write these equations. If the observation well is absent, okay, if you are not considering the observation well, then you can write the equation as Q is equal to 2 pi KB or you can replace this KB with T capital H minus small h divided by log to the base E capital R by small r. So this is the derivation for the expression uh, for unconfined aquifer that is discharge Q okay, in an confined aquifer. So this is the expression for confined aquifer which is very very important either confined aquifer or unconfined aquifer derivation will be asked in the exam so prepare well for both the derivations with diagram okay thank you